Next, I do want to actually talk for a couple of minutes about the show Citadel, which I did watch over the weekend. Uh, I don't give a lot of reviews that are negative, but today uh, is going to be not negative, but it's one of those days where I, I actually, this is what I did. I said to Mary, I'm like, Mary, uh, Citadel Kim comes out this weekend. There's two episodes up right now. It's under an hour each, which is always a good thing. They were 42 minutes, which is the length you'd see for a normal network television show if it had commercials mm -hmm. interspersed, right? I'm like, watch it. Maybe we, sh maybe you should watch it. It'll, uh, and we'll review it on Monday. And then less than an hour later, I send her another message, and I'm like, never mind. Never it's mind. Dog it shit. Sucks. Don't, don't watch it. It's, it's not that it's, it's bad. It's that it's aggressively below average. And what I mean by that is that it, it takes, it, it's basically a ripoff of a bunch of different spy tropes, meaning that it takes a general premise from the Jason Bourne movies, meaning that uh, Richard Madden's character and Priyanka Chopper's character can't remember who they are, but they still have their skills, their muscle memory. They t stole that. Uh, it's got the uh, plot from Mission Impossible and Skyfall in which a master list of spies, a MacGuffin, falls into the wrong hands and, oh no, we need to stop it before it gets out. Uh, and then it's got the alternative spy group that's not part of the government, a la the Kingsmen. The problem with all of this is, is that I can watch old, overused redone rinsed tropes yeah that's like your favorite thing but to do that you need to do one thing and one thing only you need to make characters that aren't dog shit this uh. does not accomplish that what i mean by that is it doesn't achieve its goal of getting you to give a crap about any of the characters who's in it so priyanka chopra is in, in it she's beautiful she she Biggest is star. She is the. She's the. She gets second billing next to Richard Madden. So okay, okay. she like him. Priyanka Chopra and Richard Madden play spies who are betrayed on a train and lose their memory because the train blows up. It's as stupid as it sounds. Okay, they they spent like a hundred twenty million dollars on it or something yeah, crazy. Yeah, a lot of like money. That, right. They made three versions of Citadel for yeah. different. Uh, languages. They yes. made one in like French. They made one for India. Mm. Three different shows, a movie, like theater movie level budget for a show like this that I could have bet my life that it was going to be dog shit. I already knew. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, I, I'm, when I say dog shit, I mean, like, it's, it just doesn't do anything new. And if you're not going to make me care about the characters, you need to at least do something new. I think I can even tell when they're trying. Uh, like, do you feel like... Yeah. You could tell they, they made, they like tried at least. To, to they what? They tried to make it like something, something new. No, something no, no. It's, it's, it, 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 it like boldly and unapologetically tries nothing new. So this new. is what Amazon was talking about when yeah. they wanted a safe yeah. hit. Yeah, I guess. I mean, and, and to be fair, a lot of people will probably see it that way because a lot of people don't care as much about likable characters as I do. Okay, the, the, the thing with Priyanka Chopper character, Priyanka Chopper's character is she's uh, she swears a lot and it's annoying and try hard he's annoying and he, he's good at his job and competent but they all have this vague like you would find them annoying in real life if you talk to these people the way they're talking about it and Stanley Tucci isn't enough to save it now if they had done a little bit of work and made Priyanka Chopper's character a bit more vulnerable after the first episode and they had not made it so blatant that they needed to be super good at their jobs but also the tropes are overdone. It's not worth your time ladies and gentlemen. Um, I wouldn't have thought so. Anyway. And uh, I will say that uh, people give Michael Bay a lot of crap for the, the 360 slow motion camera shots. Well, the panning uh, tilting camera shot that the Russo brothers do where they, they basically start with a canted camera angle. It's like 270 degrees turned and it pushes in and levels out to, uh, 
to a straight widescreen shot. That is becoming their version of a Michael Bay 360 camera shot that they use in everything. And it's weird because they're not the directors on this. They're just the producers. The directors of this are were both veterans of the spy frame. Like both of the directors from this project, which whose names off the top of my head, of course, I can't remember. They were both from the Mission Impossible. They both did early Mission Impossible work, right? So they know how to do this genre. But back then, they made characters that you gave a crap about. Nobody gives a crap about any of the characters in here. The lady who plays the evil, old, like, geriatric politician is the least believable bad guy I've seen in about 50 years. She's not scary. She's not... They should have uh, just gotten Hillary Clinton. It, it would have been way scarier if they had gotten Hillary Clinton to do that. It would have been way more believable. This lady is supposed to be like, uh, if Angela Merkel was actually eviler than she already is. And it's just, it doesn't work. It's, it's not Merkel's interesting. It's not scary. It's a, uh, somebody mentions Famke Jansen in the chat. I don't know what they're talking about, but I would have liked to see Famke Jansen as a younger version of the, of the bad guy in this movie. It wouldn't have made any sense. But uh, yeah, guys, it's just, it's so aggressively average. I can't in good conscience recommend it. And it could have been remedied very easily. Like, okay, <clears throat> Richard Madden's character, the spy, after he, <clears throat> excuse me, voice my voice is going good. again. Yeah. Uh, after he, after the explosion, he's got a family now. Right. So he's got a family and now he's been having dreams of Nadia Singh, who was the name of his his agent that he worked with in the spy agency. So now he's got to go off and do this mission after being tricked into doing it by Stanley Tucci's character. But you haven't been given enough time with the family to really care. But at the same time, you re you resent the fact that he so willingly goes on this mission that he doesn't understand. Okay. It's really stupid. Like they needed to spend a full episode of him with his family. They needed to spend a whole episode. Thank you. A whole episode with her and her life after the explosion. And they didn't do that. They, they had to rush it because it's only six episodes long and it just doesn't work. So that is, that is six my episodes of the first season. And you, how many did you watch? Well, two, but the rest two. are coming out weekly. So I watched um, the two. I, I guess that could be a compliment. I made it through both of them. But like they're going after a freaking spy. magical spy MacGuffin. Nobody gives a crap if you don't care about the characters. I watch more old episodes of of uh, Covert Affairs over the weekend, which is just as ludicrous and ridiculous and just as unrealistic. But at least you give a crap about the characters, right? Like she uh, yeah. in that show, Annie literally disobeys orders twenty four seven. She never listens to her superiors. She always goes off on her own. Yet she always ends up okay, which is completely unrealistic and stupid. But she's likable, so you're like, it's yes. fine. And you like the other characters in the show, so it's, it's fine. And this is just not, the, it's, it's very, very cold. Maybe that's the best But that's way. what I thought the gray man was. You were like, this is good. And I'm, I just didn't understand your take. That was a movie. Uh, a movie I'm liable to give more leeway than something that's expecting me to do. A show is basically a, a couple of movies. Uh, for this, it's and even even the gray man. I said serviceable and fine for what it was. Uh, it was awful. This this is one of those same things. Same thing. Same problems. Um, and I don't remember what I don't even remember what the plot was for exactly. for the gray man. It is a nothing. Look, it is look, like no one will remember that. I, I'll tell you this right now. If the because that was the Russo brothers too. If the Russo brothers would get off their ass and start writing characters that people found likable. Yeah. They could take this whole like paint by number spy genre and make it a thing for I mean, themselves. Did you remember anything about the character that Ryan Gosling played in that? The only character I remember was uh, was Chris Evans trying to be Ace Ventura pet yeah, detective, that and that and that was about it. Right, it's just so forgettable. Like everything is now. Yeah. Oh, somebody mentioned about my. Uh, I, I I had. Uh, I had such a, I, had a, I actually remembered my dreams this weekend. Like I, I was so under the weather that I remember my dreams. Oh. And it was basically being chased by uh, a shape shifting Famke Jansen Terminator that kept coughing on me. Mm. Like she kept like chasing Great. me to cough on me, and it was like it was it was the stuff of That's nightmares. Awful. And my, my voice is uh, my voice is back is uh, is back to sounding like that again. So I don't know what you guys think. I, I don't feel totally back to hundred percent yet. I definitely don't feel back to hundred percent right I now. I thought Kobe was Ovi. No. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on, shall we? So, guys, uh, oh, it was Josh Applebaum. That's the guy who I was thinking of from uh, the creator of Citadel, who's just, like I said, 
you gotta, it's that they've got the, it just oozes the Russo brothers cinematography style, even though they didn't write or even though they didn't direct it. So. It's like when I tried to give Sweet Tooth on Netflix <laughs> a try yeah. and I, I really wanted to like it. Yeah. And I can even tell like how hard they're trying it, yeah. making something original and new and unique. And it just isn't yeah. good. Like, I will also point out. I will also point out that this is this show is further proof of my of my assertion that they really do want to make all black women gay in Hollywood. You mentioned this. And okay, so there's this one scene, guys. If anybody here watched it, they have this scene where basically it's a panning shot, right? And it shows Stanley Tucci's character. He goes, "This is my wife," and she goes, "Ex-wife, of course, because she's got to be smarmy and snotty." Is she white. Uh, yes. Okay. So so she goes, uh, ex-wife. And he goes, okay, ex-wife. And then she points to another lady. She goes, and, that, and that's my new wife. And it's the black lady. And I'm like, that was like, they're like, okay, we got our woke points in. We did it. We did our due diligence. We, we did our wokeness. Let's move on with it now. It was very Against clear that judgment. it was just shoehorned in there for, for no reason. Like it didn't need to be there. It was stupid. extremely stupid. So... All right. I think it's not. It's not just about the gay thing, though. Like I think they also shoehorn in interracial couples a lot. Uh, in commercials, they do a lot in commercials. But you know, it is. It is what it I is. I see it everywhere. In, in this case, it was just. And it just, guys. It's just very bland. The the evil spy agency. If they had gotten a better actor, maybe like the the lady who runs Mantic. Oh, also they took the name Manticore, which was the name of the evil group in Dark Angel. So another show mm -hmm. that involves spies in some sci-fi that was better because you liked the characters. It uh, like, I think it reminds you just <coughs> enough of things that you did like so yeah. that you resent it even more. Yeah, I'm like watching, I'm like, Manticore, but Manticore was awesome in Dark Angel. What the hell? So yes, all right guys, I, I can't recommend it. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye guys.